Well, so we got about 10 minutes, so I can show you a little bit about what I got here and what I do with this kit that I got from Young Song in January when he was here. So, essentially, this is a way to make pesticides in your home kitchen. And it's completely designed to work with just what you have in a home kitchen because he wants to make it approachable and easy to farmers. So if you have to get all kinds of fancy equipment, then it doesn't matter how effective your solution is because that's people can't get that, right? So everything here is super simple. The main thing, um, is um, the wetting agent and that's the key to all these things is this wetting agent so this is made from potassium hydroxide and oil um, I use canola oil when I made it but you can use any oil um, if you watch the movie Fight Club you saw they made it from um, stuff from liposuction so even um, <laughs> It's really good soap, according to the movie. Um, so it's totally possible to make soap out of um, any oil and uh, essentially lye, which is um, potassium hydroxide. Um, you can get a bottle of potassium hydroxide like this one off Amazon. Um, or if you're looking for mass quantities of it, I suggest you search for um, biodiesel suppliers um, cause it, or cleaning supplies. It's, they also use this, it's called caustic potash and something else. And so those are um, good sources of it. Um, so the second most important thing about this is when using the wetting agent is um, not all water is equal. So I'm going to take two milliliters of the wetting agent and put it into this one. And the same amount and put it into this one. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> or not. Close enough, right? But essentially, had I done that properly, which would have had more effect. Um, now when I take them and I shake them, there's a clear distinct difference. And it's not that I messed up the amount. Um, had I added the same amount, it would have still had the same effect. Um, so, and as you watch them as over time, they'll change even more. Um, but essentially what's happening here is the one on the, this side, this one, with more bubbles, is rainwater. And this one here, uh, with less bubbles, and is more cloudy. I don't know if you can see the cloudiness to it. Mm -hmm. See the cloudiness? Oh, yeah. uh, this is tap water. I just got this water right out of the bathroom in here. So um, the best water to use is rainwater because when you're applying these things, you want them to suds up the bubbles and everything is really important. Um, and the difference between these is water hardness. So this one here has a bunch of additives into it. Um, and if you use this water and you start making this pesticide with this, you will not be nearly as effective as someone who is making it just with rainwater. Um, so, yeah, show the internet too. So that's the definitely the most important part, the wetting agent and then its action on the water. So if you are using tap water, and this is um, now for food safety and everything, you're gonna be required to use this uh, if you're producing commercially coming up. Um, you will have to get one of these, which is a water softener. And so this chemically removes the hardness from the water and makes it into soft water. Um, and then you'll be effective with your um, pesticides or application. Mm -hmm. So, unless you're using rainwater, then you don't need that. Which is going to be illegal very soon. 
With food safety coming up, yeah, if you use catchment water, you're you're going to be in violation. So talk to your state representatives and your federal representatives and tell them throw away food safety because it's not truly food safe. Um, it's actually... If you're operating commercially. If you're operating commercially, correct. So if you want to sell these things, yeah. So, um, but, you know, you see the difference already? See what's happening? Same, same thing. So, 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 for home use, you're saying, or for any use, rainwater is what you want. Yes, absolutely. It's the, it's going to work the best for you. So this jug here is full of rainwater. Um, that's why I brought it from home. Um, so, um, the wetting agent is is really a good thing. Uh, even if you're just spraying IMO or anything foliarly, and you add it in, um, it will help to, instead of form a droplet when things hit, it'll actually spread over the surface. And you, so your microbes, instead of staying in one drop, will now cover your entire plant. Um, same goes with any, any um, pesticide or anything you're mixing in. Um, you can do a test to take the wetting agent and what you're gonna spray and just like I did add, you know, say, say you're gonna add some other gnarly chemical that you got, you can test it with this and shake it up, and if it doesn't gum up, you're good to go. You can use it with this wetting agent. If, however, it gums up, don't use it because it'll clog your sprayer. But pretty much any and all recipes you use, if you're spraying them, you want to add the wetting agent so that you get this effect and this coverage. And the way we make the wetting agent is it completely breaks down in the five days into a nutrient. So it's actually a nutrient. Um, and um, completely safe and edible too. It doesn't taste very good, but it is edible. <laughs> so, um, so that that's the main deal that makes all this stuff work. Um, so, in terms of what I've learned recently um, to make pesticides and herbicides, or not herbicides, uh, fungicides and stuff like that, and insecticides, is um, using the wetting agent. And then all the rest of these bottles up here are different herbs that have been boiled down and reduced in a pressure cooker for about five hours. So I'm gonna go do a whole bunch of experimentation on what type of things we have locally that will work. Um, Cause most of these things are found in Korea. Um, but we have analogs right here growing. So a couple of the things that we saw while they were here um, were plants that bugs do not eat. Um, one of those was Wadilia grass. So I'm gonna experiment with Wadilia, see what happens with that. Um, the other one I'm going to experiment with is the cassava leaves yeah. and maybe even the cassava bark from when I um, take it off the root because I know those are known um, kind of poisons. Um, but when prepared in this way, um, they're still edible to you um, but will kill pests. Certain things like oleander um, is still poisonous to you, so do exercise caution when you are doing this. Um, but that's the general idea, is that you take um, some sort of thing that you know bugs don't eat already, just by observing it, get a whole bunch of it, fill your pressure cooker with it or your whatever pot with it, and then just reduce it down for about five hours until you get a really thick kind of um, liquid that comes out. And that then becomes your herbal solution. And what it's effective for, that's, that's up to us to kind of discover. Um, with this kit here, I've been given, um, we experimented the other night with this one, which this is the Korean pask flower root. And we were able to kill a rose beetle. So we we're just sitting around drinking. I was, I was drinking water there, they were drinking. Talking to nature, as they say. <laughs> and a um, rose beetle happened to land on the table. And I was like, dude, there's a rose beetle. And so um, Young Song just busted out his little kit, his mobile travel kit. 
mixed together some mixtures and sprayed it on the beetle. And as soon as it hit the beetle, it was trying to run away, trying to get away from it. And it was sticking its head out. I've never really seen him do that, but it was like, oh, trying to get away. It took about four minutes um, before it kind of um, just stopped moving. Um, and then we were able to observe it throughout the night. Um, we dosed it one more time when it started to move around again. And then the next morning, um, we put a um, cup over them so they couldn't move off the table, came back and it was sort of still moving around. Like it, it had got knocked out, but then it sort of came back to life in the morning. You could tell it was hurting really bad. Um, so we haven't completely figured out um, the solution for it, uh, but beetles are some of the hardest pests to treat with any methods because they have armor on them. And so basically with the armor, they're really well insulated, but as soon as they spread their wings, they then open themselves up and they'll start to die. Um, but this works on contact, so you gotta actually hit the um, plant you're, or the pest you're trying to eliminate. Um, what does that work for the beetle or sort of work? This is Korean pask flower root, which is one of the stronger ones that he has from his recommendations. And so if you look in this Jadam book, in the back, they give you about 15 different recipes for all these things on how to control. And there's one in there that says beetles, and that's the recipe we use for the beetles. The old list of beetles. So, yeah, so, that's what we're doing. So right here, I have a mixture made up, and this one is for the coffee burr bug, burr bug, CBB, and this is the solution for it. So um, I'll write it here up on the board for you. Super easy, and it's eight o'clock already, so awesome. So if you're gonna make 132 gallons, <coughs> which all this can be scaled with simple math. Um, larger batches are easier to mix. And so I'm just gonna give it to you at 132 gallons. You add oh, water. You add the wetting agent. So that's the soap I was talking about. And that is eight liters of the soap. Then it's 1.5 liters of the sulfur and 1.5 kilograms of sodium hydroxide. And be real careful working with sodium hydroxide. Again, watch Fight Club and watch where he kisses his hand and then pours sodium hydroxide on his hand and blisters his hand and leaves a kiss mark on there. So be extremely careful when working with sodium hydroxide. Every time I post this recipe on Facebook, some troll comes by to tell me about how dangerous this is. <laughs> One kilogram of fine soil. No, this recipe is not in there. This is what we're currently researching. So we got this thing here, this thing here. And what I do is I go get a bunch of CBBs and I put them in these Petri dishes. And then I take the spray, mix it up into a little spray, and I spray it on them. And then you can observe them in here. And typically things die within about three to four minutes. Um, some things cack over immediately. Um, but it takes about three to four minutes and all of them are dead within 20 minutes um, with, with this recipe here. So the basic idea is that the wetting agent helps to penetrate into them because they have um, kind of these hairs on them. So if you're having trouble with any kind of um, beetle or something that it's not killing very easily, you can add more of the wetting agent and then it helps to penetrate better. Um, the sulfur is just a general pe uh, pesticide, insecticide to knock them out. Um, it, it 
after it penetrates in, it may be the active ingredient actually killing them. Um, I'm not entirely sure why they're adding more sodium hydroxide in, um, but it was in the slug recipe, and it really helps to kind of melt things, from what I can tell. And then the fine soil is acts as a sticker. So once you put it on, the, the liquid parts will kind of glom around that um, particle of soil. And so if you can get that to stick in the CBB's hair, then it got this pesticide stuck to it, and then it can't get away from it. So it acts as a killing thing. Um, so the fine soil powder is an interesting thing. So what I have here is fine soil powder, um, although it's still in its hardened form. Um, but this recipe is the Los powder recipe from Master Cho's book, and this is Los powder. So what I did was I took the hamakua dirt and um, put a bunch of dirt in water and then had a really wide bin and let it dry really slowly, evaporate really slowly in the shade. And then the dirt really settled out into this fine sediment. And this has its own nutritional value and its own recipes and its own things to do with it. But it works really well in this recipe. That I then take this Los powder, and it's completely different than the dirt you find. Like, it's actually hard. Like, when I snap it apart, it's really hard. It's almost like clay-like. So it's not just regular dirt that you take. I've actually done this recipe to settle out the dirt. And then I take this with a mortar and pestle and grind it up, and then mixed it in to make this. So this is, this recipe right here is this. This, as is, will kill ants on contact. Fire ants, any kind of ants, you spray it on them, it'll kill them. What about, um, like uh, There's another recipe in the book from moths. Okay. I haven't killed any moths yet. Actually, we did, but it wasn't really fair. <laughs> the, the moths, the moths are probably going to need some of these herb solutions for the moths, probably. They get it as stumps, like if you are pruning, and then someone prunes too flat, and then there's water collecting the stumps. You could probably put this liquid in there, and then it would, it would definitely mess them up, especially in their larval form. That's the easiest time to kill them. The, the soil in this case, you're not looking for high quality necessarily. No. Yeah, just fine. Yeah, just fine. And the homokua dirt works really well. Anything with a high clay content sounds like that's the smallest yeah. soil particle. You could also use extremely fine rock dust. Um, it's, it's essentially it's just something for all this to stick to. And the, I think the reason it sticks to this dirt is it actually changes its magnetic properties when you do this recipe. Somehow it changes its magnetic properties. So I think it may be actually like electromagnetically holding the water to it. So azomite would be, like micronized azomite would be a yeah, potential. Yeah, easily, yeah, suitable substitute. You said you can spray this on fireworks. My question is, is it dangerous to an animal if they come and look it up or something? Or a kid? It's not. <laughs> we'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs> It tastes like sulfur. I wouldn't recommend drinking a lot of it. So. <laughs> yeah, like blisters on your tongue or something. Not yet. No, that's, that's fine. 
So yeah, so all these um, are used that way. Um, they're all edible. Um, which, which of those inputs, uh, those mm -hmm. ingredients that grows in the islands in it, you know of? Um, one of the main ones they use is ginkgo. And there's a couple of ginkgo trees up volcano side. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you could grow ginkgo. Um, tobacco. The other, yeah, tobacco is one of them. Another one is Jerusalem artichoke. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it grows, well. yep, grows extremely well. Um, and the wadabi ferns, yeah? Yeah, probably wadabi fern. There's a couple ferns that would be good to use. It's a, just wait, during your observation, go look and you see something that pests do not eat. Yeah. And that's the one. And then, and then, so what, then what you gotta do is you, Essentially, if you're gonna do research and development on this, is you take it and then you have a few of these dishes and you do concentration tests and you figure out how much do I have to add to make it effective against this pest or that pest and will even this herb work for that, this pest or that pest. And so it's a lot of um, just pretty simple trial and error. With a, with a kit like this and a, and a few bottles and a petri dish, you could really quickly sample a lot, you know. Um, and then they're encouraging us that as we do this research to then uh, feed back into the Jadam Facebook page. And so if you do some research, you find some herb that works, then just feed back that way because then all of us start doing this, then we can quickly figure out what works for what. Um, so, so this recipe here is the general one that they're using for CBD, um, fire ants. Um, this also works on papaya mealybug. Um, and I'm pretty sure this recipe here, this, this one right up here, will work for a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. However, be aware that when you're spraying this, you are reducing your microbial um, diversity. You're selecting for certain things and so this is more of an antibiotic. You've got some problem, you want to cure it, you use this. Then once you've gotten rid of your affliction, then you can then you re-inoculate with, with microbes yeah. using GMS or IMO and get your microbes back out there. So this is just kind of rescue technology to then you know get you back so you can start doing probiotics again. So I, I brought this stuff. I, I thought we might be able to try it on some pests, but we're already past time and everything. So essentially, essentially what's in this kit is super simple. It's uh, got a flashlight. So I make it easy to see the pests. Um, I got a loop, which 10 to 15 times magnification loop makes it really easy to observe the pest as you put this stuff on them. Um, got some open petri dishes, um, some scissors to just like cut things up that I haven't used yet. Um, and then when you're actually doing field trials, you use these clips to mark the, the trees that you actually treated with as you're going through and different things. Um, and tweezers in case you need to move the bugs around. And Measure, so you can see how big the bugs are. <laughs> <laughs> and a whole bunch of syringes, so you can get your dilutions correct. Um, and that's basically it. And then in the, the top, I got the herbs of various different kinds. Um, and in the bottom, it was basically these um, spray bottles. So you just go get some spray bottles. No idea what that was. Um, and then you can just test and see. So super simple to make your own kit. Um, but again, the main thing is your water quality. Again, you see the difference there. So imagine I had sprayed something out with this water, it's already ineffectual, whereas this one's still got foamy residue. So main thing is your water um, for all this. So do research with good rainwater, otherwise, um, yeah. So. Any questions on any of this? I got some here if you want it. Okay. Highest bitter. <laughs> you should get a drink at first.
<laughs> Ow. Don't go around drinking. I mean, it is safe to drink, though. <laughs> Clearly, I'm, I'm not dead yet. And um, the, the, other, the other thing to note, too, is that when you spray the bugs, they may just hibernate a little bit. Um, but I heard that basically if all their legs are laying in the same direction, they're just taking a nap. If their legs are like different like that, you can be pretty certain you've killed them. So. For, for applying the solution on to large swaths of land, does the dilution, does, does the spray rate differ? Because he said this is a, more of a recipe for insects on contact. I don't know. I st I still got to do a whole bunch of field trials to see the effectiveness. Like, and that's the thing. You can test it in your petri dishes and see if it kills the bug. But then to do a field trial to see if it's effective. Because in the case of the CBB, the bugs are up in the berry, right? So how do you get it up into them? Um, however, in my research, we found that people have been very effective controlling them just spraying clay. So if they're able to be effective just spraying clay, and then clearly this solution here will be as effective, if not more effective. So. Do you want to rare pick that out if you're spraying the big field or something? Do you want to try not to breathe it in pretty carefully, or it's not too bad? Um, you know, this, this recipe here with the sodium hydroxide in it, you may want to be a little bit careful of how much skin contact you get. I just drank it, and I've had it on my skin, and it didn't really affect me. Uh, they say that when you're using these herbal solutions, oftentimes the farmers get hot, so they just spray themselves um, down to cool off. Um, so I know all these herbal solutions are really safe um, depending on, you know, like, I mean, exercise as much caution as you feel is necessary. So if I have so. this sprayer, then I need to fill it with pesticides, but then the next day I want to do JMS or something. Do I can one rinse through, okay, between the two? Yeah, and yeah, so, and because all these are, um, like organic and they'll break down. There's no uh, residue after. The microbes actually, you put JMS in there, they will eat it and clean it out for you. Yeah, and you can actually include the microbes with this, but. Top has a notebook and a pen, very important. <laughs>